It's been six years since Adelaide United last appeared in a grand final. A raucous, emotional afternoon down the road from here at Adelaide Oval that ended in tears of joy. Tonight, Cooper Stadium dreams again. Standing in their way are the current champions, the recently crowned back-to-back -back premiers, the competition's top scorers, and probably strong favourites to make it three grand finals in a row. Melbourne City, now, let's take a check on the team news for tonight. Adelaide United making just the one change from the 11 that got the job done here on Sunday. George Blackwood returns at the expense of Cassini Yangi, for whom two games in three days is deemed a bridge too far on the back of his long injury layoff. So Hiroshi Ibasuki will lead the line alone as they revert to one up top to match Melbourne's system. Joe Gauchi, Lockie Brook, Bernardo and Louis Dorigo all celebrating call-ups to the Oli Roos Asian Cup under-23 squad announced today. Reds fans in that fine voice. There's the need for the beanies and the scarves as well. It's rather chilly out there. Likewise for Melbourne City, just the one change. Curtis Good returning to the defence after missing the match in Wellington against Wellington nine days ago. Rostin Griffiths drops back down to the bench with former Red Taras Gamulka returning his spot in midfield. Next to Alex Toby medalist Connor Metcalf. Jamie McLaren has scored in all three matches against the Reds this season. Andrew Naboot in both encounters here at Coopers. Geordie Voss starting on the bench. He's also got the Oli Roos call-up from Trevor Morgan today. And we're about to get underway. And it is Melbourne City in their light blue strip who kick us off. Going from right to left on your screens in the first half of this first leg. 180 minutes, maybe 210 if required to find a winner. The table says City. The form guide perhaps suggests Adelaide. Which way do you see it, Daniel McBreen? Well, let's just wait for Macca's opinions because Lockie Brook has been released by a lovely early ball from Craig Goodwin. Looking to attack Jamison, gets the byline and it's his behind for a corner. So Jamison must have got the final touch. An exhilarating run from Lockie Brook. Well, good evening, Simon. Good evening, everyone. You said they're the form team out of these two, and they've started on fire. Lucky Brook with a great run. Now they'll scatter, and again it's in that near post area, and Tom Glover under pressure does well to beat that one away. Two deliveries right on the button from Craig Goodwin in the opening moments. Here he is again, the Socceroo. Gets it back off Isaias. I guess the question mark, Macker against the Reds, was that short turnaround. It looks like they're in a hurry to get the job finished. The referee Chris B taking no action. They continue on the front foot. A real crunchy challenge from Isaias. Oh, what a try from Hibasuki. A snapshot, really, with nothing on. He just thought, I'm going to have a go here. And he was very nearly rewarded. Well, it came from great pressure there, wasn't it? So one day. Is flying in and wins the ball, and Ibasuki just sees a little bit of space. Tries to guide it into that far corner, but the Adelaide pressure at the moment is relentless. City have had those nine days since their last fixture against Wellington Phoenix to get ready for tonight. The old saying is you get the week off and that's beneficial, but speak to some players, Mackett. 100% sure that's always the case. You've probably experienced both sides of the coin. Yeah, I, I, I never liked having the weekend off. I just felt like you were missing, you were, that continuity was gone and you felt like you were a little bit rusty. Uh, but I, I, I gather, I guess, coming off the back of two weeks where you played six games overseas, they did look a little flat, or obviously were flat when they came and played Perth. And that defeat, I think probably for Melbourne City, it was probably good off the back of that trip. Lecky letting the ball roll on to him. It's McLaren. And Joe Gatchu makes the save with the feet. The first little opening for the A League's Golden Boot winner. And he rarely needs asking twice. Here's Andrew Naboot. City still on the attack. Tilio off the head of Jakobsen and then further clear off Brook. But the alarm bells ringing loud and clear there for the Reds. It's great positioning from Lecky, wasn't it? Let that ball come across his body. Jamie McLaren making a brilliant run in behind the defence. 
quite often you don't, you don't notice Jamie McLaren for quite long periods in the game, but you just give him those little sniffs of opportunities and normally makes you pay hard cash. Floated forward towards Smackoff. Great header on another chance. And McLaren spurned that one as well. Well, you just said it, Simon. Sometimes the defence can get into a false sense of security and think he's not really involved. And now we see it, two chances within a minute. And this time, a longer ball, a lovely header down. You see him again, just up in between the two defenders, and really there, he should be hitting the target, at least. A man of his quality there, he would be thinking, I should be scoring. But City now controlling this game much more. Yeah, I think they've done well with, on the press. They invite Adelaide United into an area and go and... When Adelaide tries the short pass, they're ready to pounce. When they have struggled, it's been Adelaide have gone with the long diagonal. Jamison. Metcalf. Little bomb two with Lekios. A great save from Gachi to deny Connor Metcalf the opening goal. Acrobatically away to his left to tip it behind for a corner. Something out of nothing, wasn't it? There's not much space to get the strike away. Bodies all around him, but it's a great strike from Connor Metcalf. And Joe Gauchy had to make the save. Because that looked like it was going to be nestling into the side netting. It's great action. Beautifully captured by our cameras. Jamison's corner. It's going to be a goal kick. So he is unflustered, finding Brook. Marty Lopez was trying to burst through, just needed a stronger touch from Brook, who's then a judge to a foul, Jamison, those two again. I think Jamison might have hurt himself here, just stretching for that ball. As the ball goes here, there's a little clip there, and as he stretches out, Not sure if it's his groin or his hip that he's worried about. He seems okay now, back on his feet. A little wink to say that he's okay, or maybe that was just to Lockie Brook to say, yeah, one to you. And in terms of goals, it's one to neither team at the moment. Fascinating opening stanza. Adelaide very good at the opening 10 minutes. Really rock City back on their heels, but from that point on, Really, in terms of chances created, it's been all Melbourne City. Jamie McLaren's had a couple of good ones, and strangely enough for him, hasn't yet converted. And then Connor Metcalf forcing a fine save out of Joe Gauchi. But this semi-final is yet to really take off in terms of goals, at least. Half-time in the first leg at Cooper Stadium, and it's Adelaide United nil, Melbourne City nil. I believe they sh they need to take a lead to Melbourne in the next leg. I think they when they move the ball quickly, they've looked dangerous. It's when they've moved the ball slowly, they've let Melbourne City get set, and then they try to play small passes in between them is when they've been getting caught out. They move that ball quickly through the lines, and then they switch the play. They have looked dangerous. So, yeah, I do think Bruce is onto something. Second half underway, and the good news for Reds fans is that 25 of the... 38 goals they have scored this season have come in the second period. Of course, a lot of those in the final quarter of an hour of games. They traditionally finish strong and they've got some weapons on the bench. And you fancy, Maka, that uh, Kasuni Yengi might have a big part to play in proceedings tonight, even if it's only the last 20. Yeah, I think so. Uh, he's such a big, strong unit and we saw what he could do against the Mariners the other night. He was causing consternation the whole evening. And I just think Probably see him as the game goes on. And he'll throw himself about, look to cause problems, and maybe one or two others to come off the bench as well. City looking to cause problems of their own. Scott Jamison didn't quite disguised that well enough. And Javi Lopez again in there ahead of Lecky. A long ball forwards with He dealt with by Nuno Reyes. Jenkinson. 
Outside him, the boots. He's continued the run. Juande's not gone with him. It's Jenkinson for City. Fires it across, and another chance goes begging. And Jamie McLaren, for a third time, can't convert. Extraordinary. Well, uh, well I think the ball was at a height. It was wonderful play here first down the right-hand side. And Jenkinson here has all the time in the world to pick his spot. And he just de delivers it as a real awkward height for McLaren, where he couldn't get the leg up, didn't know whether to stoop for the header, and ended up just trying to throw his chest at it and really got it all wrong. That looked like a foul throw as well. I thought so as well. Here's Lecky. Jamison shut down immediately by Ibasuki. And then Isai is chopped down by Metcalf. And Chris Beath is just going to have to keep a little lid on this. Yeah, and the yellow card is about to appear for the first time tonight. It's going to be waved in the direction of Connor Metcalf. There we go. It's just been bubbling under the surface the whole match. Just a little niggle. You can see there, there's no way Connor Metcalf's getting that ball. It's the fact that he's gone high as yeah, well, I think. He lunges in around the knee. Oh, he doesn't clatter into the knee, but he just goes into that knee area. Nothing. Just start wondering when either coach might think, OK, it's time to make a change. Add something to inject into this game. These two teams have uh, picked up the most yellow cards in the A-League men's competition this season, along with MacArthur. Reminder of the final series, you need to accrue three yellows during the series to receive a one game ban. Oh, Nido Reyes came lunging over the top of Goodwin. In fairness, it's ended in good enough spirit. There's no malice, but a yellow card is issued nonetheless. So we wait nearly an hour for a booking, and then we get two in quick succession. Oh, he just totally missed time that, didn't he? You could see he had eyes for the ball, and he could see Goodwin there as well. Goodwin used his body well. He's got himself between the you narration know, and the ball. It was all apologies straight away. So final half an hour of an increasingly tense First leg of this semi-final. Nothing between them. The Reds looking to build some pressure. Goodwin set piece. Headed away by Gabulka under no real pressure. Lecky trying to burst clear. He say he won't let him. Reds looking threatening. Brook had to take it quickly because he was being shut down. And that really took all the sting out of it. Starting to put one or two together, Adelaide now. You can see here, under heavy pressure, just couldn't quite get the strike off with any real power, but just on those occasions when Adelaide win that ball, put the pressure on, starting to find a little bit of joy. I wonder what that means in terms of the reach here, because Bosch, of course, Bosch, of course, is uh, very much more a left-sided player. So he'll play in the 10 roll. And the boots all lucky, we shall see. Here's this oh, as well. Big shout for handball there. Chris Beat says chest. VAR will look at it. Carl Jenkinson with the arms out. Now, if that does strike the arm, I reckon that's a big decision for Sean Evans of VAR. To inform Chris Beat of whether he needs to change his mind. We'll go on for the moment. Here's Goodwin. The crossing towards Ibasuki near post. And Nuno Reyes is there. Here we go. It's off the elbow of Jenkinson. And we're told that the review has said no. The, to be fair, the elbow is close to his body, but here we go again with the old handball. Yeah, yeah. It's so, so difficult for the officials. At the very, the very first moment, Chris Beath signalled that he, the arm was against the body. That's why he didn't give it. And you can see he doesn't have his arm in, but his elbow's sticking out. 
And what's he supposed to do? I don't know what yeah. else he's supposed to do. You can see why the Adelaide supporters went up straight away. We've got to do something about this handball, Will Mecca. Because it baffles the hell out of everyone. Lopez waiting for the angle to present itself, and it did. To thread it through for Lockie Brook. He has to go backwards to come forwards, if you see what I mean. 20 minutes remaining in South Australia. Kitto trying to get clear of the boot, which he does. Cross-headed down towards a teammate by Metcalf. Adelaide will come again. Isaias. Wide right is Javi Lopez. There's three in the box to hit. And one of whom is Craig Goodwin. And he did get it on target. And those chances are coming the way of Adelaide now, but a succession of rather tame finishes for Carl Beards too. Well, we'll see on the Harvey Norman replay here, the delivery much better this time, and three Adelaide players attacking that back post. Ball probably just in the air for too long that Craig Goodwin couldn't get the power and direction. Oh, now that's uh, an awkward collision in the air between Kitto and Naboot. Kitto initially got the worst of it, you felt, but Naboot is the one who's remained down. He sort of careered over the top of Kitto and landed heavily. Here's another look at it. He's jarred that left knee, Andrew Naboot. Yeah, you see, he thumps down on that left peg pretty heavily, doesn't he? Yeah, and just seen a shock through his ankle and knee there. There's been a couple of occasions this season that he's got the knock on his knees. Always seems to get on with it, though. Here's that double change for the Reds. <laughs> so, the big introduction for Bernardo. He comes off the bench to the expense of Lockie Brook. And Ibasuki will be replaced by Cassini Yengi. So, Carl Viet making his move off the bench. Tall hard tonight, Hiroshi Ibasuki, no goal for him this evening. And he's found the going rather tough against Nuno Reish and Curtis Goods. Two of the better central defensive players in the league. Let's see if Kasidi Yengi can do any better. Well, we've seen three substitutions now for Adelaide and we're coming into Carl Viet time in this final 15 minutes. <laughs> yep. I'm sure he'll be expecting some fireworks. 16 goals they've scored this season in the final 15 minutes of matches, 11 of those off the bench. Let's see if the magic works again. Or oh, can City steal one? Here's Andrew Naboot, and it thumps back off the upright. And City were that close to taking a precious goal back to Amy Park. And now Matt Leckie has been penalised. And there's a wrestling match going on between Juan Day and Conor Metcalf as Tempest Flair, but Lecky was late in that challenge. All action at Coopers. And a boot, a whisker away from putting his team in front. Well, he just ghosted in at the back, Naboot, didn't he? he? Used his strength and power and just couldn't quite find the angle. And then we see foul from Lecky. And for mine. Slows down the play at first. I thought he got a touch, but on that angle... No, it's clumsy. Uh, clearly, yeah, yep. didn't get the ball. And probably deliberate to try and prevent that quick counter from the Reds. I feel that Adelaide really are taking this game as it goes along into this final 10 minutes. But nil-nil probably suits City more than Adelaide. And they have come the closest to opening the scoring through this man on the ball here, Andrew Naboot. Squared up for Lecky. Gamulka for Naboot. Lovely football, it's Lecky! And it bounces off the chest of Gauci, who stood strong and made the block. Another good chance created, though, by the Premiers. 
just as I say, they aren't creating much. <laughs> they go and make a liar out of me. The boo with the chance not too long ago. Now turns provider for Lecky. It's good goalkeeping from Gauchi. Stood strong. So Stefan Kolakowski will operate down the right hand side. The young man who really made his name this point of the season last year with a goal and an assist against MacArthur in the 2021 semi-final. Lucky now up against Jakobsen. And Jakobsen with the infringement. Yeah, with a little bit to say, oh, I'm not sure. That's going to get out too well with Lucky. They lock heads literally, the two veterans. That was really something out of nothing and totally unnecessary, but the little prod on the back of the head by Jakobsen incensed Matt Lecky, who is on a booking, remember, and might yet rue his response. I mean, it's a foul, yeah. but there's no need for what followed. You can have your talk, you can, you can say what you like, but the little the prod in the head Prod on the head, top of the head was the thing that really set Lecky off, and I don't blame him. There was no need. Jamison's delivery, which had a nice tail on it, it drops here for Lecky. What a save from Gauti. That's a terrific tip over the crossbar to deny Matt Lecky, who caught that absolutely flush. Well, it was a wonderful ball in from Jamison. It made it difficult to get the ball away, and as the ball falls here, Lecky with a wonderful volley. A tight angle, and Gauchi, great reactions to get the hand up quickly, but that's a wonderful strike from Lecky. Three big chances now for Melbourne City. And again, it's Chris Bird who uh, ends up being <laughs> the pantomime villain. Here we go. Uh, you know what? You want I, me to eat I can words. see. <laughs> I can see. Well, that's been given the way it was, and that is full time. A chorus of boos around Cooper Stadium, and that's not for the effort or the intent. Both teams had periods of this game where they were on top. Melbourne City hit the post through Andrew in a boots. Matt Lecky had two very good chances that produced good stops out of Joe Gauchi. At the other end, Tom Glover. Largely untroubled, but the Reds did have a big shout for a handball against Carl Jenkinson. At the end of it, though, it ends all square. For the third time this season, these two cannot be separated here at Cooper Stadium. It is a result that arguably favours City with the return leg to come at Amy Park on Sunday. But an entertaining game, and unfortunately at the end of it, no goals to take to that second leg in Melbourne. Adelaide United nil, Melbourne City nil.